Come on. Hello, hello, hello. How are you guys? Adjust my cameras. Hi. So happy to be with you again today. I feel like I'm live all the time these days, but I love it and I enjoy it and I have so much to share with all of you. Um, and today it's the, uh, <clears throat> it's that time of the month for another story of hope. Are you guys ready? This is a great story of hope. I mean, they're all great and amazing, um, but particularly geared at those of you that are trying to conceive a little later in life because this is one of my um, eldest uh, natural pregnancies in my practice. And I've had quite a few this year of women, 46, 47, 48, uh, either creating healthy normal embryos or getting pregnant naturally or getting pregnant with IUIs and, and IVF actually too with their own eggs. So, but this is a great, you know, they're all great stories. This is a current story of hope. I actually went through, I pulled a bunch of charts from the clinic, but like I have so many new stories, like you can't see this is a small post at one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 12 stories that, and so just so you know too, I do not share stories of hope until we are like, new baby is in the arms of somebody or um, very, very close to having a baby. So that's rule number one with me and my practice. And so all the things you see on my stories and on Instagram and Facebook of posts of positive pregnancy tests, we share those because they're exciting news. Um, unfortunately, of, of you know, of course, because they're normal miscarriages happen. So I don't share the stories of hope until we're really at the end of the pregnancy or that baby is in that woman's arms. And so let's get into this story. And uh, the title on Facebook, Instagram, you guys don't have a title yet, but on uh, YouTube, you guys will see the title as well. How Zuzi, that's her name. Obviously, I change names, I change locations, I change things, um, not the facts about you know, her fertility journey, if you will, but change things that were personalized. So I keep, keep my ladies anonymous and those that want to like share publicly, they come on and do live videos with me. We usually do a bunch of those in late summer, early September. So keep an eye out for those. And, um, I'm so honored because so many of my girls are just eager to come on and share with the whole community at large, their story and their live story of hope, because, um, they, they needed inspiration when they were going through their challenges. And so it's, it's really a beautiful process. And if you want to see any of those stories of hope, just go over to my website, amyrop.com and look, it's right there for you. Just hit stories of hope. And, uh, we have, gosh, you know, I don't know, dozens of them on there at this point. And then some of them are videos as well. And those videos can also be found on YouTube. They can also be found on my Facebook channel. So how Zuzi got naturally pregnant at 45, almost 46 with a healthy baby. So I'm going to pull up her chart notes. Um, and like I always do, I'm going to read through her chart information. Um, big thing for me is only ask questions as they pertain to this case. I'm not here to answer questions about your case today. So just take this information in. If you want your questions answered, you can always join, join me on my fertility hot seat, which happens every other Monday, um, or join my live Q and A's that we are now doing on a regular basis to answer questions as well. And if you need information on either of those, just DM us on the back end, Instagram or Facebook, uh, same thing. Um, okay, so, uh, she found out she was pregnant, I believe in September of last year. And then about two months later turned 46. So she was 45 when she started working with me. Um, she was doing some acupuncture and was planning to do some fertility treatments, but because of COVID, everything got put on hold, right? So she had done three IUIs leading up in an attempt to conceive this child. Uh, she has two previous children. So she struggled to conceive at the age of 40 um, and sought a fertility doctor, got pregnant the first IUI, and then tried to conceive baby number two, um, had an ectopic pregnancy. 
She lost one tube in that process. Then she sought out more fertility treatments. She got pregnant at the, with the second IUI for baby number two at 42. So 40 and 42 are her pregnancies. And then now she's been trying to conceive baby number three um, for about a year and has not happened naturally. Went to She did three IUIs, no success. Then COVID put everything on hold. And since everything was on hold, she decided I'm going to do, she did a five pack of coaching with me. Um, and so, um, let's see, she has hypothyroidism, she has uh, allergies, and she was on CoQ10, cod liver oil, vitamin D, magnesium, prenatal, and green juice pills. And um, she exercises regularly, she sleeps seven to nine hours, but obviously she's a full-time mom of two little ones. Uh, she has a matcha latte three times a week, no other caffeine. So this is all my new patient intake. So we ask a lot of questions, typical breakfast, chia pudding with some yogurt, berries, seeds, no sugar, um, eggs with avocado, some roasted veggies or beans or lentils, uh, veggie enchiladas, kale, quesadilla, veggie zucchini, homemade pizza, vegetarian curries. So she's typically not, um, she eats nuts, gluten-free crackers, um, but she's typically on a more vegetarian diet. She does eat some eggs, but so just so you notice, this is how she comes to me. Obviously I'm making adjustments and I'll go through those. Um, <clears throat> most predominant emotions, um, anger and then joy, but she really gets angry at herself a lot for not doing enough or good enough. Um, she does yoga two to three times a week and she walks most other days. Um, and she's got a good family support system. Her red flags, not a lot. Headaches, sinus congestion, cold hands and feet, back pain. Um, she has a regular uh, menstrual cycle. And like I said, two healthy children, one miscarriage, a topic um, in between. So our first consultation, um, we do in, let's go all the way back. Um, 4-24-2020, so just a year ago, literally. Um, so 45 years old, trying for a baby, did three letrozole IUIs, no, sorry, super regular, ovulates regularly. Um, with the letrozole, she was getting three to four follicles each time. Lining always looks good. Sperm is good. Um, she really felt pregnant after the second IUI, but nothing happened. Um, she's doing progesterone. Um, I recommended getting her progesterone tested five to six days post ovulation. She did Prometrium with all IUIs, seven months of really trying to conceive at this point for number three. Last month felt like it was going to happen, but, um, Oh, last month felt it wasn't going to happen because of all the COVID stuff. Um, and then she goes on to tell me, okay, PMS usually gets increased hunger, occasional cramps. Um, cycle day one, heaviest, changes the pad two to three hours. Cycle day two, still heavy, but gets a bit lighter. No clots, good color red. When she did stop um, breastfeeding in January, the periods did get a tad heavier. Uh, tapers through cycle days three to six. She was on some Chinese herbs from her acupuncturist, but she had run out. So I took over on the herb front as well. Um, hair, skin, and nails always dry. Um, eyes good. Some sinus issues she talks about. Um, digestion, super regular. Energy is pretty good. She sleeps eight hours. She goes an hour and a half between waking and eating. And she doesn't eat meat. She's tried bone broth. She didn't really like it. Um, so we went through her diet, um, and then her supplements, I, I adjusted, I increased her fish oil. Um, I, in, I added liver pills, uh, two a day. And then, um, she was doing my yes program, which is my mindset program and was loving it. Like really working through beliefs. Um, she's not a drinker, doesn't drink alcohol. Her husband's not on any supplements, but he's open to it. And so I said, add in the greens, the fish oil and the liver to his routine. Um, she does her matcha three times a week. I said, add collagen peptides to that. That way she gets protein first thing in the morning. And then the other days that she just does hot water with lemon or tea, add collagen peptides to that. 
Um, maybe eats gluten once a week. Sugar is more than it should. Um, she's gonna start doing a food diary for me. So there was that. Um, and I sent her a follow-up email. Um, I wanted her to get progesterone levels checked, um, try some facial cupping for her sinus issues. I And then I asked her to start sneaking bone broth in into her veggie soups, making butternut squash soup, liver support juice, which is from um, my second, my third book, Body Belief. And add collagen peptides to your tea or your chia seed pudding to get more protein in. Add in uh, up the cod liver oil and the liver pills. Um, so let's see, she ordered the broth. Um, she added the collagen peptides in. She's noticing she's feeling less hungry. She also included more fish. So she was open to doing fish and broth and eggs. And for any of you who have asked me questions about vegetarian, semi-vegetarian diets, that's what I always say to you. If you take the liver pills, you add in some broth, you do the eggs and some fish, we can do it. You don't need to eat meat. And even in my book, Yes, You Can Get Pregnant, and in the next book that's coming out, The Egg Quality Diet, I recommend 8 to 12 servings of fish a week and 7 to 14 eggs a week and only about 8 servings of meat a week. That doesn't include the bone broth. So, And then eight, 6 to 8 servings of vegetables every day. So my menu is very vegetable heavy and very fish heavy. And so just to keep that in mind, everybody, because I think um, there's a strong association that like you have to eat meat or if you work with Amy, you got to eat meat to get pregnant. Um, I do think animal protein is great. I just had some myself, but um, you can do it with just eggs and broth and fish and taking liver pills. Um, okay, so, you know, we talked um, the the second meeting we had we talked a lot about the age conversation. She was really stuck on, I'm too old, I'm too old, I'm too old. Um, and the question of, am I doing everything I need to do? Which I know you guys can totally relate to. And so um, she has, she was working on the surrender piece and then confidence. Cause she said, well, my body's always needed help getting pregnant, right? She needed IUIs for the first two pregnancies. And so now this third pregnancy is not happening. And so for the liver pills, go to my website um, under my recommended supplements and you'll see. Um, and so can my body really do this? Like she's not confident in her body doing it on its own. Um, and the one time it did happen on its own, she had an ectopic. So she has a bad association with it happening. So we spend a lot of time and any of you who are new to me or haven't worked with me or my team, we spend a lot of time on your beliefs because beliefs impact behavior, behavior impacts health. Beliefs also impact physiology and what we call emotional inflammation. And emotional inflammation definitely impacts health, egg quality, hormone levels, all of the things. So will I have a miscarriage because of my age? That's coming up for her. Um, so um, I told her to embrace the anxiety and that do I, you know, do I really need help? Like that was a question too. Like she was kind of dependent on the help. Um, and I said, you know, she was into the spirit baby conversation, so I told her to continue that conversation with the baby, listening for nudges from the baby, have conversations with the baby to have more fun. I kept getting this vision of her when I would coach with her, of her dancing with her two current children and almost like saying to the spirit baby, like, come, come, see how fun our life is, see how fun this is over here. Like, you know, it'd be so fun to add you to our family. And so she started doing stuff like that. Um, and then I, we were working on the kindness and forgiveness piece to herself because she was really, really hard on herself. Um, so the next coaching call is in May. Um, she's her, her cycle was a little lengthened. She ovulated on 1920, um, cycle day 1920. Uh, she was feeling anxious in her head. This can't be it, but this could be it. Um, because it felt so different. She was sticking to the plan. She said, I'm not a friend of bone broth, but I'm doing it. Um, she increased the fish. She's doing the collagen peptides. And we went over her diet again, which is something I do regularly. I really just check in. What are you doing? I want to make sure you're hitting your macros, your protein, your fat, your vegetables. Um, she's doing the liver pills. She's visualizing. She's having more fun. Her and her husband spent some time going over like the four pillars of their life and what's so important for them. Her sinuses also seemed better. 
Um, an age thing came up the other day. Um, and she had this feeling of like, I'll show people, I'll show people that I'm different. If you guys have any questions about my supplement recommendations, you got to go to my website, amyrop.com. Look under my recommended supplements. Everything I like, all the products are linked there. She was having the conversation with the spirit baby. See how fun this is. It's your timing. So she was really working on the surrender piece of it's the baby's timing versus my timing. I'm going to let them come through. Um, she was getting butterflies, good feelings in her stomach, waves of excitement, feels a lot of love, something is different. And we talked a lot about, and, and I know you guys can relate too, a lot about the rigidity in her life. Like, I have to do this and then equals this, right? And if I don't do this, I'm not going to get pregnant. And I know I probably add to that rigidity of like, you should eat protein and you should eat fat and you got to take the liver pills. But also, I also want to point out like she's feeling better. She's feeling happier. Her, her red flag symptoms are going away, like her sinus issues so her ovulation was good and strong. She, she's feeling like she's doing something. So she's feeling empowered. So I want you to make those changes from a space of empowerment and a space of I'm doing this to optimize my health because fertility is an extension of health. And even at the age of 45, almost 46, she can still have an impact on her egg quality. And if you guys missed my live that I did on Instagram yesterday with Dr. Murphy about egg quality and whether or not we can improve egg quality and epigenetics and also about eggs and that we don't run out of eggs we still have a lot of eggs even in our 40s even in menopause we still have over a thousand eggs left in our ovaries if you miss that live you gotta go back and watch it so it's with me and dr murphy and it's about egg quality and epigenetics i think is the title you have to watch that live it will change the game for you there's so much new information and we're being told an old story about this fertile cliff that we fall off of and about the fact that you know, in our 40s, all our eggs are bad. It's just not true. We, we can do a lot to influence the quality of those eggs. So anyway, we spent a lot of time on that. She still hadn't gotten back to, um, to acupuncture because it was still like really in the heart of COVID. Um, and we worked through de decompressing a lot of anger and the why me, the victim mentality, um, and her husband was really on board and he kept telling her, you're developing super follicles, super follicles. And I love that, you know. Um, okay, so the next meeting is about a month later. Um, her period came yesterday, cycle day 26. She was really bummed. Um, it was varying between 26 and, 20, and 32. She got a positive OPK on cycle day 13. Her BBT was in the high 97s. It didn't even hit 98. So... She she felt defeated because she didn't even feel like an inkling of hope this month. Um, and that meant she hadn't been great food wise. So she had a case of the fuckets. That's what we call it here at Amy Raup. Um, she ate cookies. She ate sugar. And her sinuses actually got better, which I thought was really funny. Um, but she got a crap corner in her lip. Anyway, so she felt terrible physically, though, is what she said. So she's like... She saw the negative impact of the of going back to the old way of her diet. And now she feels recommitted from a new level, a level of I want to feel better because I was just feeling so good. And and again, if you're new to me or have been working with me, you know, I am all about you feeling all the feels. There is no toxic positivity in any of the work that me and my team do. It is all about you feeling all the feels. The biggest thing is you not beating yourself up for the choices and and also I think it's good to stray sometimes to see the difference the diet or the lifestyle is making for you and it helped her recommit in such a powerful way and then she was beating herself up like what's wrong with me why have I waited so long which again you know the beliefs and I knew you you guys can really relate um husband super supportive um and so I, I shifted the focus like what can we focus on what's make what makes you feel better because she said, I just want to feel better. And so we shifted it from, I have to do all these things to get pregnant to, I just want to feel better. Um, her thyroid jumped up. So even going off the diet plan, her thyroid got wonky. Um, uh, the crack corner of the lip, um, you know, hormonally, I'm not sure it's related to much. I see it as heat in the system and it's from the sugar. So, and some say a vitamin C deficiency too. Um... Her D was a little low. Her AMH, she got it retested. It came back higher than it was when she was 42. So her AMH, through the work we had done, 
um, had almost doubled, which is really funny because it when she was 42, I think it was like a 0.2. And then at 45, it came back at a 0.53. But you guys should know this too, that these numbers are not set in stone. They give us an idea. They are not set in stone. They are not defining your fertility. Um, so today she was feeling it is what it is. I want this and I'm going to continue to show up for this. And that's all I ever ask of myself, of all of you guys. If you know you are in that space of wanting it, I just ask you to continue to show up as the best version of yourself in a way that's supportive and kind and loving to you. So questions that I pose to her that you guys should take in. How am I showing up every day for my goals? I want to feel my best, um, you know, and um, yeah. And then I recommended that she get the UVA because she couldn't, you know, it was again during like the height of COVID and she wasn't able to go in to see her doctor for monitoring. So I said, try the UVA, which if you guys don't know about the UVA, it's O-O-V-A. Go to my website. I have information on there under my recommended um, products. So you can check that out. But it's a great at home hormone testing kit. Um, the oldest natural pregnancy I have. So I have 47. um yeah, 47, oh, natural pregnancy, sorry. A 46 is natural pregnancy. Oldest natural pregnancy is 46. I did just have a 48-year-old. Well, it's a couple months now, but she made a genetically normal um, embryo. So doing retrievals. She's not in a partnership, so she's doing this on her own. But um, that's the oldest PGS normal tested embryo I've ever had at a 48-year-old. But 46 um, at this point is the oldest natural pregnancy. I've had 47 year olds do it with their own eggs and now 48. Um, and so, and I have 49 and 50 year olds that are doing retrievals and getting embryos. We're not testing them. Um, we'll see. I have a 50 year old that's, or yeah, she's going for a transfer soon with her own egg, her own embryo. Um, so anyway, so more like more times of like the inner critic alignment every day is a new day, being the best version of myself today. And I know you guys are all just sitting here like chomping at the bit, like how much DHEA did she take and what supplements did she take? And I want to do this. I want to do this. But like, I can't stress enough the importance of this mindset piece, which is why I love the work that my team and I do with everyone, the coaching sessions. Um, and even if you see us for acupuncture, it's a lot of one-on-one -on -one, like coaching too, because we really get into the feelings because to us in Chinese medicine, the emotions play just as much of a role as the physical symptoms. So it's, it's less about chronological age and more about physiological age and those belief systems. And what are you believing about your body? Okay, so we talk again in August. Got a period. Um, according to Uva, her progesterone looked good. She also used the at-home progesterone, which is Progestive Veil. It's an over-the-counter uh, cream. Her period looked good. Her TSH is back in check. She was bummed, but she said to me, but I still believe. I'm talking to the baby, and now she knows what it feels like to her, for her TSH to be off. So she's really felt like she's learned a lesson about her body. I said, let's maybe we get back to IUIs because the clinic was opening back up. She was planning to do an IUI this cycle. It's August, um, 2020, everything's set to go. And she said, I have nothing to lose. I'm in the game and wants to give it my best chance. She feels good about it. IUIs have worked for her in the past, off the meds since March, TSH is back, all her supplements, all the things. She's eating protein, getting her veggies in. I gave her new herbs and she loved them. So now at this point, she's been on my herbs since um, July. So we're two months into herbs, Chinese herbs recommended by me. I am a, a master. Well, I study with a master herbalist. I, I uh, am an herbalist as well. Um, and we really spent time this coaching session. How did I feel before I knew I had fertility challenges? And so how do I get back to that space? And then we also spent time, which is a, a, an exercise I do and I recommend all of you guys to do. How old do I feel physically versus chronologically? How old do I feel? Um, she said 40. She said all my mom friends are under 40 and she, and they all think that she's her age, the same age as them. So, um, you know, she said, um, even we talked a lot about feeling broken and how hard this journey can be. Um, 
And then um, she felt invincible heading into the first IUI. Um, and she felt invi invincible in my YES program. And then I posed the question to her of like, is it too much pressure? Like, do you really need to feel invincible to get pregnant? Because I felt like that was like, she's putting this superhuman um, pressure on herself. Like she has to be some kind of powerful human being to do this versus can it just work for her and she can be human. So, um, and she put this timeline on herself because of her age. And so we were working on that bit. Um, I say I will have this child, but I wonder, will I really? The age thing, the hard days with the kids. I'm not a patient person, you know. So we talked a lot about flexibility and humanness. And I said, you are human, you are imperfect, and you can still get and stay pregnant. And actually, after this coaching call, I went on to Instagram and we made a post that said exactly this. You're human and you're imperfect, and you can still get and stay pregnant. And it was all inspired by this woman's uh, coaching sessions. And it got so many likes. So then um, we spoke again September 9th. Um, and um, she was having a super long cycle. She was cycle day 30 at the moment. And she wants nothing but sugar today. So she's hoping her period is coming. She maybe didn't ovulate. Um, she showed a peak on OPK, had two signs of ovulations. Um, um, Ari thought there was a cyst and he said they, they skipped the IUI that month. Her, her hormones were a little off. Um, she ovulated way late. And so as we're talking, she's like, I think maybe I just ovulated on cycle day 27. And I said, well, did you have sex? And she's like, well, we just kind of had like fun, fuck it sex because like I'm not getting pregnant on a uh, cycle day 27 ovulation. But she said, um, I said to just test with the uva tomorrow because I want to see what your progesterone is doing. Um, and then, you know, she was taking a lot of vitamin C at the time and drinking a lot of broth because she, she was having sinus congestion issues from some like environmental stuff. Um, so, you know, this month was really hard because of the IUI and the cyst and it got delayed. So she, again, doesn't do the IUI because there's a cyst. She doesn't ovulate until cycle day 27. Um, she did some acupuncture. So she started back at acupuncture. So at this point now, she's been on my herbs for almost three months. She just started back at acupuncture. She's now been doing my diet for four months, almost five months. Um, and... We talked a lot about trusting the guidance. If there's something more I have to do, I trust I will be guided to it. We'll do the UVA tomorrow. Um, and then, so she sends me the next day the UVA um, and her progesterone was at a 60% on the UVA. Those of you that don't know about the UVA, go and check it out. Um, again, on my website, and it's an awesome tool. So that shows that she's ovulated. It's 60% is basically um, like a 13, a progesterone of a 13. So I know she's ovulated. Um, so I said, you're in fact in your luteal phase. And then I said, do your herbs and take your progestivale. And she was like, okay, okay. And because she's really given up on the cycle. She's ready to just like say fuck it to everything. And I'm like, no, you're still in it. You just ovulated. So you stay in this cycle. Um, and she said, my body does know what to do, doesn't it? And I said, yes, it does. Um, and then, um, we continue to email. Um, so let's see. Um, she asks me a couple days later about taking an acetylcysteine or DHEA for her case. Cause she had read it starts with the egg. What is, what should she do? And I said, you can do DHEA, but no more than five to 10 milligrams a day. Um, I don't like the high dose of 25 times three a day. I think it's a lot and it's really can have negative impact. So you really need to know everybody's individual case. And then I said, and the, N the NAC can't hurt either. Do 600 milligrams a day. Okay, and so then um, for CoQ10, she then emailed me. You can tell she's like doing more research because now she's getting anxious about the fact that she's not getting pregnant. Um, but mind you, she's still in the luteal phase. So she's taking, she asks about CoQ10 dose. I said she could do 400 if she wanted. Um, I said 600 is too high. Um, and then, um, so 
At acupuncture, she emails me again, September 19th. At acupuncture today, my doctor said I bruised easily. My blood was very light red. She was wondering if I have enough iron as I'm not eating meat. I told her I'm taking liver pills, but she wondered if I should increase the dose. I'm wondering if I should have more blood work done. Um, and then another email. I'm on day 40, by the way. Oh, this is the same day. No period, nothing. Hopefully acupuncture today will move things. She did a lot for moving. So she cycled day 40, which is now 13 days post ovulation. And so um, I said, sure, if we get a period, I, we can add more meat. Like, let's talk about that. Um, and I said, are you taking your herbs? And she said, I stopped my herbs. Um, my acupuncture said if I don't bleed by Wednesday to call her and she would give me some herbs to help. And so I said, take the luteal phase herbs that I recommended because um, her BBT was still up and... Um, and I said, um, she said, let's hope my period comes soon. I'm super anxious to move on. Um, and then I said, when did you, yeah. So um, I wouldn't have advised stopping the herbs. And she said, I stopped them around day 32. Um, and then she's like, I'm just having such a hard time working on myself, handing it over. Then she's asking if she should do castor oil packs. This is now um, cycle day 30, uh, sorry, cycle day 41 to move things along. And I said, you can do a castor oil pack, but you got to take a pregnancy test first. And she gives me pushback. She doesn't want to take a pregnancy test. I'm not pregnant. How could I be pregnant? I said, ovulated on cycle day 27. I have a cyst. The doctor canceled the IUI. I said, I do not recommend castor oil packs in the luteal phase. If you tried, you guys tried to take a pregnancy test. Hi, Amy. Holy shit. This just happened. It is faint, but it is there. Day 42, going for a blood going for a blood test shortly as I called the clinic. Keep you posted. Should I stop the herbs? Should I stop any of the pills I'm taking? Holy shit. And there's a big picture of a positive pregnancy test. So now mind you too, uh, you know, the acupuncture she was seeing was all about like encouraging, like did I, no one said to take a pregnancy test. Everybody assumed that this cycle was off. I wrote back, holy shit, stay on the herbs, just the one formula that I had her on, stop the other ones, um, and stop the maca, the DHEA, the CoQ10, just basically stay on fish oil, prenatal, B vitamin, probiotic, liver, report back, um, and baby aspirin. And so then I said, take the baby aspirin. She's like, I'm in shock. Um, uh, and then I, I had her stay on the herbs, add in the baby aspirin, um, and then... Yeah, so, um, okay, so, um, and then I told her, I went back through all of our notes and the UVA, and I said, you ovulated around cycle day 27, so cycle day 42 positive pregnancy test makes a lot of sense, as you're only just missing a period. It was technically due around cycle day 40. Um, and she said, I took a pregnancy test last week, like, so basically cycle day 36, and it was negative, so I expected a period, um, and then I made her take another one and it was positive. Um, and then um, she, I made her get progesterone tested. And so then we just continued on. Um, I had her get her thyroid tested. Her first beta came back at 100, which was amazing. Then her second beta um, was 383. Progesterone was a 9.6, so it was a little low. So we got her to get on progesterone supplements. Um, and she, you know, she did them vaginally and then, um, her thyroid meds, we increased a little bit as well. So baby aspirin, progesterone, thyroid meds, um, the supplements that I discussed, some Chinese herbs, um, and then, um, let's see. Uh, there was a lot of exchanges of like, you know, your body knows how to do this. Cause now she's worried, you know, of course about miscarrying. She had a pretty rough um, first trimester. Um, she emails me, they see the embryo, um, everything. Um, and yeah, let's see, I wanna get, um, I heard a beautiful heartbeat today, I'm over the moon, this is getting real, seven weeks, two days. This is amazing. Um, let's see. Uh, Let's see, then these are just some more supplement questions. First ultrasound today with the regular OB. Um, all looks great with the baby, it is growing well, heartbeat is strong, made it to eight weeks. Um, 
and her thyroid, getting that checked. So that's the other thing that I'm supremely anal about is I really make sure my girls are getting the proper blood work early in pregnancy to support the pregnancy because there's things that go wrong that don't need to be going wrong. And if we properly check and test, we can prevent a loss um, in a lot of cases. <clears throat> She turns 46, she can't believe it, she's 46 with a natural, she said, guess what, just turned 46 and found out it's a healthy baby girl. And I was just so proud of her. And she said, I can't believe I'm 46 and pregnant. All the genetic testing came back normal. We are so happy and guess what, we are having a girl. This is truly the cherry on top. Um, her doctor wanted her to stay on the baby aspirin throughout the pregnancy. Um, so yeah, and we just emailed the other day and she's about to have the baby in a few weeks. So beautiful story of hope. Naturally pregnant at 46 after needing IUIs to get pregnant with the first two. So anyway, um, yeah, hope you guys enjoyed this one. I, I surely did enjoy it. And for more stories of hope, you can head over to my website, amyrupp.com. Check those out. And yeah. Every month I do another story of hope from uh, my clinic that, you know, my team and I, I have uh, several acupuncturists that work under me as fertility acupuncturists. I meet them, with them every single week and go over cases. So even if you guys can't see me, you're in really good hands with me and my team. And then my team and I also do fertility coaching to women all over the world. And um, this woman is not, you know, I never saw her once physically. No, this was all virtual work. So yeah, beautiful story of hope, guys. Um, Okay, love you. I'm going to hop. Those of you that are in my fertility reboot, I will see you in about 22 minutes for our first group coaching call. Super excited for that. Okay, have a great day, everyone.